and welcome to another figure skating talk. It's been a long time. It's been since the previous Grand Prix series, so my goal for this one is to do it all the way through the season. I am here with my friend, as you can see. Hello. Um, and she's going to be talking and previewing Skate America with me. I'm going to go through what has been happening since, um, since the beginning of the season. So yeah, uh, Skate America. We have a couple of big names here. The first Big thing about Skate America probably is that Elizabeth Teresa Baeva has withdrawn because of her injury, which obviously takes a huge name off the list because she is the world silver, med silver medalist. So it opens up a potential spot for another one to take to the podium. Um, and that's on the women's side. On the men's side, we have possibly fewer names. The field isn't quite as deep, but that's just the men's competition. Uh, but we're gonna be going through the women's first and then we're gonna go through the men's. As always, this is kind of like a podcast format. We're not gonna be doing much other than sit here and talk and it's gonna be pretty long. So you can just put this away and just listen to us discuss figure skating for an hour or whatever, however long we decide to talk. Since I've never done this with a friend before, don't know how long <laughs> this is gonna take, but we're the kind of people who talk a lot. So let's see, but we're gonna start with the ladies and I have a little bit of a cheat sheet over here if I can find it. So let me just go through who's gonna be here. We have, from the US, we have Brady Snell and Karen Chen, who are probably the bigger names from America, but we also have uh, Amber Glenn from the US. And then, and then we have Anna Sherbakova, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Tsukmishiva, Kaori Sakamoto, Wakaba Higuchi, Mako Yamashita, Yun So Lim, Stanislava Konstantinova, Yi Christy Leung, and Veronique Mallet. So that's the women. And in the women's, who would you say you look most forward to seeing? Oh, that's a hard one. I really look forward to seeing Kaudis. Yes. Um, <laughs> because we haven't seen Kaudis yet. Um, we have seen uh, a lot of the others mm -hmm. during uh, challenge pro Challenger series. Yes. But we haven't seen Kaudis. Yeah, we've only seen Kaura at Nepala, and I'm not entirely sure that's an issue sanctioned uh, competition. Uh, but we have seen very little of her. When it comes to Kaori, she has an ankle injury this weekend um, and she's been having problems with her triple triples, which is... Um, it's not that good. It's not that good. We're both fans of Kaori, yeah. so uh, we're hoping for her to do well, but with an injury and in a, in a field this steep, it's difficult if you don't have not necessarily a clean program, but at least something close to a clean yeah. program. And the short program is probably going to be a huge teller of who's going to be on the podium. Um, anyone else you look forward to seeing? I really look forward to seeing Brady Snell's short program because yes. we've seen her free skate yeah. in uh, in the Japan Open. In Japan yeah. Open, yeah, <laughs> and it was it was really really good. It was really really good. We just we watch it and <laughs> it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's really really good. Really good. Um, I talked about Brady Snell last season also, and I was like, wow, her programs look really good this season compared to in the Olympic season. And once again, this season she looks better than ever. Brady Tunnell just, she's been growing on me a lot as a skater. I think it's the same with you. Yeah. She just, she really went from this like, nov, not no, novice, but like a new skater who had the jumps and not really anything else to offer. And then suddenly she has artistry, she has spin, she has steps. She really focuses on those uh, presentation yeah. scores. Yeah, so she's just, I'm really looking forward to her short program too, because she's doing uh, mechanisms and chronos. I don't know what it is. I was on the ISU page to see what her short program was and I was like, I don't know this music. I don't know what this could possibly be, but I'm very interested in seeing it because she's doing a lot of different styles. Yeah. So I hope it's going to be really good. Um, anyone else? <laughs> well, that's the, um, that's the people we haven't like seen. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I also, I really look forward just always look forward to seeing Lisa skate. Yes, because Lisa <laughs> is amazing. Lisa <laughs> is amazing. Um, and, yeah, and I really, because her new programs, they <laughs> are really, really good and they suit her so good. Yeah. And her triple axle is like, it's, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't know how she does it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's, it's on point. Yeah. Her, it's it really like her weird unorthodox style and like the, weird entry into the triple axle, it, it works for her and it makes everything about her very unique. I've seen some practices of her new entry into the triple axle and it looks really great because she has oh. less of a, much less of an entry into it. There's more transition, so it looks really, really good. Nice. Um, and I was, uh, you didn't see that, uh, Elisabetta had 
her short program uh, originally to the drumming song and then she changed it just before the season started to have the same choreography but another song and you didn't see that no, I but I did and I remember watching it and I was like what is this because I knew in the back of my head this wasn't the song it had been choreographed to so when she changed it at her previous competition I was so happy because finally the choreography made a lot of sense to me and it just it looks so much better now I'm so happy that she changed it and it Finally, the song is actually something that I associate with Elisabetta because it's upbeat. It's like a little bit quirky It's just really really good and she really owns the music. Yeah, this song just makes her statement I'm the Empress. Yes, it really does, <laughs> <laughs> it really does. and her, her her dress it's like I am the dark Empress. <laughs> it's, so good. it's really really good I uh, also really like, we have a lot of skaters who have uh, pants. Yes, a lot of season. women with uh, pants and bodysuits. It's really great. It's really great. Just at the top of my head, we have Kaori, mm -hmm. we have Elisabetta, we have Satoko, we have Genya. Yeah. It's just a uh, lot of women in pants. <laughs> and Lisa chose to do it in a free skate yes. instead of the short program. <laughs> yes. So she was like, I'm doing different, but everybody else is doing different too. So I have to be a little more <laughs> different. <laughs> It's just, God, Elisabetta's just always on point with her costumes and her music and she's just such a breath of fresh air because she's not the pretty princess. Not that everyone else is like, we have Kaori here doing the Matrix and No Roots for a short program. Like, it's not that everyone is that pretty princess, but when when Lisa does it, it's always different. It's, it's always so different. Yeah. just really, really good. Um, I really look forward to seeing Wakaba Higuchi. We've heard from a lot of people who've been at the practices uh, yesterday and this morning that her practices are looking really, really good, and she hasn't had a good state since Worlds 2018. Um, which is really sad, because Wakaba, for anyone who's followed me, she is one of my favorite skaters. Now, Kaori has been slowly itching her out of her first position because she, Wakaba just hasn't had a good skate for such a long yeah. time. But I think she's finally getting over the ankle injury that really had her out for most of last season, and her programs, as you said, we were watching them this morning and you kept saying, wow, this has a lot of potential, but yeah. <laughs> she, we, we basically watched through like all the skaters yeah, who are going to be yeah. here and she was like, wow, this has a lot of potential. <laughs> that was like her catchphrase. And I was like, yeah, well, that makes sense. because we're so My new catchphrase. But, but for Wakaba, I really, yeah. really agree with you because when she was skating it at, I think it was the Mardia Trophy, um, she had obviously a lot of technical errors and she wasn't fully connected to the music Which of course if you keep falling and popping it's really difficult to really get yourself together But especially the short program. It's very very Wakaba ish. It has that high Energy feeling to it and it's still a program that she can interpret really really well Yeah, and I'm really excited because I think if she can skate it cleanly or at least oh, very close so to beautiful. cleanly It's gonna be really good and it's gonna be a huge confidence booster because she hasn't really done that well at the Grand Prix for a long time. Like even um, when she qualified for the finals uh, two seasons ago, it wasn't that good and she ended up placing last at the finals. Yeah. Um, because Wakaba is like one of those skaters who, she tends to have really, really bad days. Um, and she has more bad days than she has good days. So which bad. is such a shame because she's an uh, insanely talented skater. And she has like, not necessarily everything, like I would want to see more one-footed uh, one skating from her, mm -hmm. a little bit more in transitions into some of the harder jumps, but she has a lot of speed. I've seen her lives, like her speed is incredible. Um, and she really like, sh she connects with the audience. I don't know, it, it it comes off through a screen, but it doesn't come off as well as when she's, you see her in person, so. And she's so good to skating to, to the music and to mm -hmm. the rhythm yeah. and to the different uh, the different paces in yep. music. You see, his short, no, her free skate. Yeah, her free this, skate. This season is uh, it changes the pace of yeah. music like four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tempo changes are crazy. They're crazy, and she just does it yeah. so well. She does it really, really well. Because <laughs> really a well. lot of people you've seen, like in other programs, when the tempo changes, they don't like vary their speed or the the interpretation. But Wakaba really feels the music when she does. Like a, a really good example of this is obviously her Skyfall free skate from two seasons ago, which was just like. One of the most beautiful free skates of all time, literally just like blows my mind every time I see it. Um, but yeah, she, she has a similar, like, not a similar program to her, to her Skyfall, but the changes in music are this, like, kind of the same. So it's something that she's used to doing, which is why I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that she can do this really, really well. But obviously her previous competition wasn't so good. So I'm just hoping she has one of her good days. Um... Another skater we've been talking about was Yun Seo Lim. 
Oh yeah. Uh, we were really impressed with her last season, obviously. She was amazing. Um, but I think we both had the feeling we watched Autumn Classics. Um, I don't remember, especially her show program that well. No, it. I think I remember her dress yeah. the most. The dress. It's. It is, yeah. The dress is always good. <laughs> you so you pretty. Sir is so pretty in <laughs> those just dresses. So pretty. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> but I like, don't know how she does it. Um, I just I'm I'm missing that little spark I had from her last season, yeah. and she's obviously had some coaching issues. She had the whole scandal that came from Worlds um, last season with uh, Mariah Bell and her coach and her coaching team, and then in the summer she switched back to her old coach, which which I do believe was the better decision for her. I think rather than have a very competent coach, which you can argue whether or not Raph is, I think it's better to have a coach that you're very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And if Yunsu wasn't feeling comfortable in her environment, regardless of what happened at that incident, um, I think it was a much better choice for her to go back. Um, but her programs, I am, I'm lacking a little bit. And I don't know if it's the programs or if it's just like she was having a bad day or whatever. Because um, we, I saw her also at Shanghai, and I would say at Shanghai Trophy, she skated a little bit better. Um, but I, I want, I, I'm hoping that one of these competitions, it's gonna break through for me that she's still like that skater I really fell in love with last season. Yeah, because last season, like the first time I saw her programs, mm -hmm. I was, you were quite Yeah, I, I cried. <laughs> you were crying. <laughs> I cried. And my heart was just pounding so yeah. much because it was was so good. Yeah. But I miss the, the feeling yeah. that she had and yeah. she showed during the last program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season. So I don't, I don't really remember her choreography that much because yeah. I didn't get the same feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from this yeah, season. I had the same feelings about it. So that's probably. Just but maybe it's just because she has to get used to them more. Yeah, I don't know. maybe. Hopefully. Yeah. As I said, like she kept saying, potential, potential. Potential. When we were watching potential, the program. Potential. So. Yes. Um, but this is the beginning of the Grand Prix series. So we were discussing also like whether or not we were going to see any high scores. I asked her like, are we going to see any scores over seventy five? And you said no. I said no. So I'm not sure. Uh, if we're going to see scores over 75 mm -hmm. it's lisa yeah if I, she skates cleanly yeah and get the presentation points she deserves yeah yeah, yeah. She, lisa tends to be really underscored um i wouldn't say that she's one to like if she was score correctly grab a lot of the higher pcs just because she is yeah. lacking transitions um and there is especially with her triple axles there tends to be a lot of crossover which before we really get to something but Having her for the free skate like in the low 60s, mid 60s, I think that's ridiculous sometimes, especially yeah, if she skates true, clean. Yeah. It's mm. and even like her last, um, I don't remember what competition it was, but she got 32 for presentation, even though she was practically clean. It it's it's really not right com when you compare it to other skaters who have maybe only a little bit more when it comes to everything, but they get like 36 or something. So. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. She's probably the most likely because we do have we haven't even talked about Anna Sherbakova yet. Um, Anna Sherbakova is probably the most talked about of yeah. the names we have here. Um, this is her debut for the Grand Prix, senior yeah, Grand Prix. Senior Grand Prix, yes. Um, and she comes in with two quad lutzes in her free skate. Um, and I believe she does triple lutz, triple loop combination in her short program. Um, now we've both we ha we had the same reaction yeah. to her show. We watched her show. I I feel like I watched her show program like at least five times I within the last three weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's like whenever her show program stops playing, I forget what it's about. <laughs> I can't even remember her dress it's, anymore. No, <laughs> it's 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 like very fine and yeah. And it when you look at it, you go, oh, that's actually yeah. quite beautiful. But when it stops, you forget it. It's. It's they, technically perfect. Okay. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. It's, it's just, just boring. It's just really boring. <laughs> it's really, really and it's really nothing boring. against Anna Sherbakova. It's just, um, unfortunately, she does suffer from uh, her choreography isn't really that good. I think it's just, it, it's missing something unique. It's yeah. missing like something. Uh, her interpretation, I think, is also lacking a lot. I, obviously, she's a 15 year old girl. You can't ask too much of a 15 year old girl when it comes to musical interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if, if you're a 15 year old, like, let's say, Aliona Kosser and I, who has really good musical interpretation, it's just, it, it's literally talent. It's not something you can yeah. learn. But it's also, it's very, I think it's very hard for Anna to, yeah. because she has to live up yeah. to that musical interpretation. Yeah. And she just doesn't have it. She's yeah. 15. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a couple of years to get exactly. the maturity. Uh, it's amazing that Aliona has it already. But we're not gonna see it from Anna, and it's it's a shame for Anna because she has quite lessons, but she's easily overshadowed by Alexandra Tsurova, who obviously had 
she has a quad toe, she has a quad salad, she has a quad lutz, and she does them really, really well. Where Anna, she has a quad lutz that's like, you know, the pre-rotations yeah. and other rotations, and it's just, it's not always there. So it's easy for her to get overshadowed. That being said, there's a pretty high chance that she's gonna win the entire competition because she's the only one who has a quad. Although, because you can't use the quads in the short program, there is a chance for the ground to be leveled yeah, in her. Because I, I could actually easily see her not even making the top three in the short program. Yeah. Because um, she scored, what was it, 67 at her previous competition at the short program. And there are a lot of skaters here who could easily go up uh, 70 about, plus. Yeah, 70 plus. Um, yes. So if they can make a little bit of a gap between in the short program, it's going to be harder for her and there's going to be more pressure on her yeah, for the free skate. Um, that and being said, she's probably likely to at least medal. At the very least medal. At the very least. Except if she bombs both of her quads. That's true, that's true. That then it's going to be yeah. very hard for her to medal. Because yeah. It's the quads that does that she has. Yeah, it is the quads. Uh, she has transitions into a lot, of, and like even without a quad, she does have a high technical scoring potential. But yeah. having two big mistakes, just even if it's not quads, that's just that takes a lot of points off. Um, and I'm wondering how she's gonna deal with the pressure, um, because I would say there's probably less of a mm, how do I say it? There's less of expectations on her out of the. The, out of the, the, the three, three girls yeah. but because she's alone here and she's so expect like there's so many expectations just on her winning this competition yeah exactly because now um you know what she's called Elena uh, Kostnaya. yeah Elena Kostnaya. she's not here yeah so this is the Terry girl of this competition yes so there's a lot of pressure on her and when she can't do get that many points yeah. in the short program the free skate is really gonna pressure her out. Yeah, lot. yeah. Um, however, there's also just a chance. I, uh, we, I think we've seen this before. That like when young juniors come up into the senior, there's usually they feel less pressure just because they're younger. They feel less scared of making mistakes. Um, but it depends on what kind of personality she is. And I, I, I've said this before. I don't really follow juniors that much. I've seen some of Anna Sherbakova's previous progress because I knew she was coming up. The same with the other Terry girls. Um, but Anna Sherbakova really is the one that I connect the least with because, at least with Trusova, I can appreciate her technical prowess. Yeah. And with Kostya and I, she's just beautiful to watch. Um, but Sherbakova, she's just she falls in the middle and she again she's she's perfect in what she does. It's just I'm not feeling it. No, it's you get very forgetful for yeah. her. Like, yeah. Like you just don't really remember mm. what what she did. Yeah. So it's, it's not very memorable her yeah. skating. I'm I'm really hoping she can like survive uh, a couple of seasons because I think she has to borrow your word <laughs> potential. <laughs> she has the potential. She really does. But I I'm but waiting for her to mature. Is if Icheri will let her. Yeah, evolve that is true. That. She has so many girls. Yeah. Like she has obviously the three girls and she still has Alina. That's true. Um, and when it comes down to it, only three girls can make it to worlds. Exactly. Um, and we still have Senya, we still have Lisa. Now, I do believe, despite Senya being my favorite, um, I, I highly doubt we're going to see her at Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, anything so could happen, sad. but... Anything. But it, it really depends yeah. on the Russian nationals, because it does. because Russia is crazy. They don't really take the Grand Prix that much into no, consideration. No, if they, if they, if they did, <laughs> Lisa should have gone to Lisa Worlds. Lisa would have been at Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, 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 they really, like, because they, they choose, if you're unaware, they choose... Um, their Europeans team based mostly on nationals and then they make their decision after that and then sometimes they have a lot of other factors like yeah. uh, last season they had well should we send Senya or Elizabeth and then they had the Russian Cup to kind of decide that and they ended up sending Senya but they also take things like scoring potential into account yeah. so even if it comes if it comes down to something like scoring potential unfortunately Senya has the least scoring potential because she doesn't yeah. have a triple axle uh, she doesn't have a quad even though she is working on it um, yeah. I'm w wondering if she's gonna debut it. I don't know when, because I'm I'm really struggling to figure out when it would be smart for. Because I think trying to debut it at Russian nationals would not be smart. Because if it's the first time you use it at such an important competition, oh, that would be yeah. uh, that, that that would be hard. If she bombs it, yeah. then she's definitely yeah, yeah go exactly. not going to either neither Europeans or world. Yeah, exactly. So. But I don't see her trying it 
like in the Grand Prix either because she's still doing it in harness and even though it looks great in harness she is getting a little bit of help um, like like the if you've seen the video of her doing it in harness yeah. the guy who's doing the harness isn't helping her that much but he is helping her get the height to do the jump everything yeah. else is just her the speed the rotation the landing everything looks great but she is still it's getting a little, little bit, bit of help and she has to land it out of harness too, and then she has to land it in competition. And doing th stuff in competition that you're doing in practice is way harder. It's, it's so hard. It's way, way, way harder. <laughs> Take it from two people who used to do competitive swimming. It, we both have um, experience trying to change our technique. Yeah. And it took us literally two years. It takes around two to, to, to do the proper technique yeah. in competition. Because when you're under the pressure and the adrenaline yeah. kicks in, your body and your muscle memory just automatically yep. goes back to the old technique. Yes. Um, and you don't do it on purpose, you really try to think yeah. about it, but it's so hard to it's change. It's so, so difficult. It's really difficult to change. Yeah, and obviously it's a little bit different when you're trying to do new things. So I'm assuming if she starts doing quad styles this season and it's looking good, maybe she can do it next year. Yeah. Um, so obviously not two years to change her technique, but maybe a year to learn something new. Um, but obviously her like her triple style cow is great. I, oh God, it's her so triple cool. style cow it covers so much ground. It has so much height. It's it's literally a perfect jump. Um, so it is the perfect jump for her to turn into a quad. Yeah. I don't know about a toe. I know she said she wants a quad toe, but I don't know if I would necessarily want for her to do that. I think I'm almost more inclined to say that she should go for a triple axle because her double axles improved a lot. Yeah, and she's very good with the edge. Yes, she is really good with edge jumps. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it depends. I, I also yeah. personally, I just love the triple axel. Yeah, the triple axel. <laughs> triple axel is. I it's just, just such a beautiful jump. Yeah, the triple axel is. Well, the axel just in general is my favorite yeah. jump. Um, yeah. So um, I I would love for her to see like to get a triple axel, but. Let's start with a quad style. I feel like a quad yeah. style is going to be the easiest of like another, a higher technical jump uh, for her. Um, who haven't we talked about? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that's almost it for the women, like just talking about them. Should we go to our predictions? Or Ooh, okay. we can start talking about, because um, we did both like who we think will medal and who we want to medal. So do you want to talk about who you want to okay. medal? I really want Elis Vesa to get the gold. Yes. And I want Claudia to get the silver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I think I want Brady to get the bronze. Yeah. And that's just based on her new free skate. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. I really yeah. love it so much. But yeah. that, that's my wish list. <laughs> that's your wish list. Now for my wish list, I can go through my wish yeah. list. Then we can go through what we actually think will happen. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Kaori, so I am. Um, I, I, I would love for her to win. Uh, and then I, I'm jumping on board with Lisa too, having silver, and then I want my girl Wakaba to get the bronze. Now, both these podiums, especially mine, is very, very <laughs> unlike. Like, if my podium ever had, I'm s uh, straight up just shaving my head or something. Yeah. That's, it's never, it's gonna, never I, gonna, I, gonna no, 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 no. It's um, extremely unlikely. <laughs> um, Except if every other skater bombs. Yeah, if every, like, not only Every other skater has to bomb, but like Lisa has to like pop a triple axel and Wakaba has to like skate hers fully. It's like a combination of the craziest yeah. stuff that has to happen for my exact podium it's to happen. Which is why it's happen. a want and not like yeah. a prediction. Um, for predictions, you still have Lisa's number one. I have Lisa's number one. Yes. Uh, but I, I think she's done competitions, she's mm. a challenger. Yeah. And I think it's very important to have gone out with your program and used it for competition before yeah. and she seemed like she's very she's very in place with yeah. the feeling and also her techniques yeah. and stuff for these programs this yeah. season yeah. already it's 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 really good yeah it looks really good and then i have anna yeah in second in solar and that's <laughs> because of her quads yeah because it's not because of her <laughs> the memorable program yeah thing. And then it's also a bit of a hope, um, but if Kaori skates clean, yeah, and she gets the presentation scores <laughs> that she deserves, that she deserves, then she could get the bronze. Yes, um, I would be completely fine with your program, uh, with your rankings. Obviously, yeah. as a fan of all of these skaters, um, mine is very similar. I also have Lisa and Anna as for gold and silver. 
Um, my reasoning for putting Lisa is because she has a stronger short program, yeah. and um, I am not necessarily worried, but I do think the pressure might get to Anna a little bit. Um, so I think I don't think we're gonna see another 150 free skate from her. Um, and then I have Brady Snell for bronze. Um, the reason I have Brady for bronze um, is first of all because uh, Cowrie's ankle injury. Yeah. I, I would have easily put Cowrie as a, a 430 if it wasn't for that. But also because Brady's skating at home, and I feel like there's a pattern of her skating really, really well when she's skating at home. Yeah, she skates. Um, well. Like her first, the first time she was really noticed was at Skate America two years ago when she got, I think it was bronze or silver. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking that Brady is the kind, is the kind of person to really feed off a home crowd, kind of like Yusu is. Yeah. Um, so I'm predicting Brady for third. However, I would love for Kauri to be fourth. We both think that Brady and Kauri are going to be third and fourth, yeah. just uh, opposed. Um, so yeah, I think that's all we have to talk about when but it comes to that. But maybe the reason I put Kauri in third is yeah. also because I really want Kauri to yeah. get to final. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that uh, we should probably talk about that. Brady has back-to-back uh, -back, uh, yeah. assignments. Um, yeah, she's which is, going to be at Skate Canada. Yeah, next week. So next week. it's... I would assume it's very unlikely for her because both feel like every Grand Prix for the women's are crazy yeah, deep. They are. But it's probably hard for her to make it to the finals when she has such little time to rest. Um, and I agree with you. For that, I would probably prefer to have Kauri in third because that makes her chance. It, it's really hard for women to have a chance at the finals if, if you they, have a fourth yeah. place. You need medals in basically both of your Grand Prix exactly. assignments. Um, but I just think the home crowd advantage plus the ankle injuries speaks yeah. more to Brady for me, but I would prefer your podium, if I'm completely <laughs> honest. But I want, I do want Brady to do well. Um, also because yeah. to get to the final this season, because yeah. we have the three New York Terry girls, yeah. it's going to get even harder. It's, oh my god, it's, it's literally a bloodbath. I, yeah. I, I straight up would not be surprised if the entire, like, um, Grand Prix final was just Russians. And then maybe like Riga Kahira. Yeah, like Russians and Riga Kahira. I like my honestly, like it would be like four Terry girls, like including Alina, Elisaveta, and then Riga Kahira. That's yeah. almost like what I think the 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 finals would could be. Could like. happen. It it honestly could. It there, honestly there's nothing could. really stopping that. Um I think we talked about everything I want to talk about the, for the women. So let's go to the men. The men. Oh. Okay, so for the men we have for the US or the front runners for the US, obviously Nathan Chen. And Jason Brown, and we also have Ale Alex Krushnason, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then we have Junwan Cha, Dmitry Aliyev, Boyang Jin, Keegan Messing, Michael Brishina, Koshi Oshimada, Roman Savosin, Kazuki Tomona, and Alexei Buchenko. Um, who are you looking forward to? Jason. <laughs> Jason Brown. <laughs> Jason Brown. Um, Jason's one of my favorites. And it's anyone with good taste as Jason, <laughs> as Jason is one of their favorites. Exactly. Uh, but we haven't seen Jason yes. uh, uh, at a competition. Yes. It's his, so if, uh, if you don't know, Jason, uh, before uh, US Champs Camps, which was, I think it was in July or something, yeah. he was in a car accident and had a slight concussion. concussion yeah, so he's been sad. out of competition. He had to withdraw from, I think it was uh, Nebelhorn Trophy. Yeah. Um, so this will be his season debut. Yeah. But we've seen uh, on Instagram, yeah. he put up some clips. Yeah, glimpses of his... Glimpses of uh, his... Uh, he's doing Schindler's List for yes. Speed Skate, which is... It's a war horse, but I personally love war horses when it's done by skaters who have great interpretation. Yeah, because they can make the war horse their own program. Yes. And I think Jason's really one of those people who can make it his yeah. own program. <laughs> yeah. Because Jason's presentations, they are God. They, they are, they are. That's a really good way of putting it. He's just like otherworldly. <laughs> otherworldly. They are God. He is truly, truly amazing. I love him. Yeah. I love him so much. But also, uh, I really look forward to his short program. Because yes. Jason does so well normally in his short program. That's true, that's true. His short program is usually his strength, especially now that he's going for uh, the quad style and the free. Yeah. Uh, if, if he's going for, I don't, I'm not entirely sure whether or not because of the, the concussion and other things that he's yeah. going for the quad style and the free, but he's definitely going for the triples yeah. in the short. We also saw it at Worlds that he got the yeah. silver yeah. Uh, the for the short. The, the sword, small yeah. silver for the short. Yeah. Um, and it's just points out that you can do it without the quads in yeah. the men's because if you get the GOE and the presentation yeah. that Jason does, 
Yeah, you I can, would fight for it without I would, quads. I would really love for him to get to 100 without a yeah. quad. I, I think that would be really, really great. And it would push men's skating towards something that's not just uh, quads. Yeah. Uh, I love technical stuff. I really do. But the judges, in my opinion, really award the quads more than they should. Like, you can see sometimes with Nathan or even with Boyang sometimes that yeah. the quads, they, they kind of, they, they help you more than they should. And you kind of tend to get more GV just because there is no fault in the quad more so than it being difficult, there being yeah. transitions or it being matched to music or something like that. So I would love for someone like Jason to be more rewarded for not doing quads and just doing them with yeah. a lot of great technical difficulty because of transitions and stuff like that so yeah i agree with you i would love for him to really kill the short program kill the short program i also i really hope i hope that nathan both can be short but no that <laughs> jason wins <laughs> i was like why are we talking that? that was a weird no yeah that that jason will win the jason short will i, win I the agree short. with you i really I want him to win the I short really want to. um I also, I'm not entirely sure about Nathan's layout, but I do think he's only doing one quad for the short because he tends to build slowly yep. for the season. Um, and Nathan's goal is to make it to the finals, and there's no need for him to go all out in a Grand Prix series that he's exactly. basically destined Since to win, win yeah. unless he like completely flops. <laughs> but it's so rare. He he skates very cleanly at the moment, um, yeah, and I think it's because he's not because he's skating mostly with mostly without a coach. Because he's skating at Yale, um, their little rink there or whatever. Yeah. Um, he's not trying too many new things because it is dangerous to try to do too many new things without having a coach Oops. on demand. Yeah, true. Um, so it, 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 it heightens his level of consistency, but it also just kind of limits what he's doing in terms of transitions, yeah. raft transitions. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's true. And just uh, his, like, his skating skills are slowly improving, but it's a really, really slow progress. Um, and while his Rocket Man is very different from other free skates, he's not like Rocket Man, despite the ugly ass costume. The bus seat. <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> the bus seat costume. It's so ugly. It's um, like, I would. I was like, Nathan, the black was better. <laughs> the bla we wanted you to get color, but this is not what we meant. But yeah, the Rocket um, Man is definitely different. It's very different. Uh, from his previous free Like, I remember, oh my god, I watched his. Um, I don't even remember what it's called Mouse uh, Last Dance. I watched that live in Milan, and it was like the most boring thing I've ever seen. And I'm the I really loved uh, his uh, 16, 17 programs, um, especially his short program. Ooh, it was good. But his free skates the last two seasons have been really boring, and they've been practically the same. And it's just, it's not good. It's I, I'm sorry, Nathan, but the Rocket Man, it's different. It's different. Um, and ignoring the ugly shirt, <laughs> um, <laughs> I I can get behind something that's different. However, he is still. You know, very prone to kind of just doing like laps around the rink, jump, another lap, jump, and then yeah, and rinse over, and repeating. Jump, yeah. Um, so I am hoping for an evolution in his program. Um, and we haven't seen the short program, so we haven't seen the short program. I'm hoping that we're getting something that was just as amazing as his caravan from last season. Yeah, that I, was really. Good. I really loved his caravan last season. It was full of energy and, of course, still lacking a bit of transitions and stuff. But it it kind of made up for it because his uh, performance skills yeah, really shown through in that program. Yeah, so they did. But also the free skate, I feel there's so much um, like tempo yep. and Rocket Man is so fast. It is, it is. And without the transitions, yep. I feel that it may be the music takes over the yep. story for Nathan. It's yep. Maybe it's, I hope he can grow into it, yep. but right now it's a bit too much. Because yeah. it's the music that tells the story and not Nathan that yeah. tells the story. That is th that's why I don't like like people who have weaker interpretations because yeah. I don't like them skating to music with lyrics. Because it tends to really like overshadow the skaters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's we, we ended up talking about Nathan even though that wasn't really where we we're going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are there anyone else you look forward to other than Jason? I really look forward to uh, to Boyang and to yes. Keegan. Yes. But Boyang, he did so well <laughs> yes if you didn't watch him at lombardia especially the short program oh, it was amazing it was so good it was really really good and you can just see that he got the the um, choreography yes. early because he was so at home in yes that program. he was very very comfortable with his program another thing you said a lot like when we were watching like these skaters kind of a little bit stiff and you could really see with boy yeah. and he was very smooth Move, in his skating yeah. and his running edge was really really nice especially i think it was a triple axel um he, he, 
especially the short programming, he looks very comfortable in his own very skin with that. Yeah. Um, and Keegan, obviously, he's uh, your baby boy. <laughs> Keegan's my baby boy. <laughs> I think he's older than us, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's Keegan's my baby boy, okay? And he got married this summer. Yes. And his short program is basically a declaration of love. It is. He's skating to Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and it, it's really good because it's different from what it's he It's so different from yeah. what he usually does. And you can really feel the love he has in his program, yeah. especially the, the short program. Yeah. Um, but that makes it really good for, for Keegan yeah. because what he has, when he has a good day, he skates amazing. Last year, yeah. was, was Skate America or Skate Canada. Uh, he got it was his very first Grand Prix. Yeah, the very yeah. first Grand Prix. He got the silver and yeah. we were all so surprised <laughs> because he did so good. And then he like totally flopped yeah. in the second Bomb. one. I, I was uh, He got a Helsinki, I think. A Helsinki where he was fifth or sixth. Yeah, it was really, really low. But, and then he got to the final because you used it with yeah, withdrew. yeah, yeah. Uh, but this time you can really see that what Keegan needs to to do well in his skating is he needs the feeling. Yeah. And the pressure just does a lot. But yeah. I really think that doing this love declaration, not just, I don't think it's just the short program because he has a lot of love in his <laughs> yeah. program as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. in his free skate. But the short um, program is just special. It's special and yeah. it really means a lot to him. Yeah. But I'm also scared because his brother just died. Yes, so for Keegan, he's had a bit of a whirlwind of a year. He got yeah. married in the summer and then he won the bronze at the Autumn Classics. Yeah. And then a few weeks ago, his brother died in a motorcycle yeah. accident. So. so you have to wonder where his mind is at, just whether or not it's still like with the tragedy or if he's able to focus completely on the competition because Ke Keegan, uh, Keegan on a good day is strong. He's a really good performer and that is his strong side, even yeah. though he, he has quads, he has the technical side, but his strong suit is the performance. It's the, but definitely. if his mind isn't into it, yeah. if his heart isn't into it, it's probably going to be difficult for him. It's going to be very difficult for so, him because every time yeah. his heart and his mind is not into the yeah. feeling and to the performance of a program, yeah. that's when he flops. Yes. So. Um, so sometimes his pressure in this time, it could just be like his mind is still yeah. in the tragedy and that's not in his control and it would be completely understandable yeah. if he completely flopped um but on the other hand it could also be a way for him to take his mind off of things Definitely. and the short program program could help him because it has a, like he associates good memories with that because yeah, he's really skating does. to his first dance at his wedding yeah um it's beautiful it is beautiful like it's super cheesy but it's when you know the story extremely it, cheesy. It's, it's, it's it's justified <laughs> it's justified it's completely keegan cheesy yes it mm -hmm. makes my heart like bloom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna talk a little about June one because June one is my baby, and he's actually younger than me. So I feel like I can say this without you know feeling a little weird about it. But yeah, June one, um, his programs this year they're extremely good. Like they always are. Like you can really tell that he's always like moving forward when it comes to interpretation of music <laughs> and the composition and all that stuff. Like, and his skating skills get better every year. Um, the problem with June one is, as always, the under rotations and just the snap and the jumps. Cause June one needs a good day to land his to land his quads, uh, which is unfortunate because when he does land them, they look really really great and he tends to have a really nice running edge. Um, but he sometimes, and this is usually when he's having food problems or when there's just too much pressure. Or sometimes when he's just ill, uh, depending on what they, it is, he just tends to have some under rotations, and he's bringing a new quad with him. Um, he did try the quad flip at Autumn Classic in the free skate, and he under rotated it, which I kind of expected. I was actually quite surprised that he like just landed it on his feet. Um, but whether and here's the thing, I think June one, he he benefits sometimes from a lenient judging panel. Yeah. Um, cause I am all for hard skating. Um, but on the other hand, I also think that sometimes if he gets away with one or two under rotations, it kind of makes up for the fact that I think he's super underscored in mm. the presentation. Yeah. Um, so some, somewhere in there, the, the points kind of, they balance out, but I think he's still getting the wrong scores, even yeah, though so the end they, result is correct. They balance out yeah. for June one, Yeah. but then they're unbalanced for the other skaters yeah. and then it 
yeah, it, it it's will really, not make sense. It, it's <laughs> unfair sometimes, yeah. but uh, but Junwon's like especially his free skate this year. It's it's fire, not to make a pun, but it's super fire. It um, is fire. So I'm really, really hoping for for him to do well. Um, is there anyone else we should talk about? We we kind of actually talk about Nathan. We haven't talked about Dima yet. Dima, yes. Dimitri Aliyev seems to be finding his way back into the skating world. I had so much hope for him last season because he did so well in the Olympic season, and then he just just kind of stayed as if he was still in the beginning of the season. Like nothing really happened with Dima last year. I don't no. even remember what he was skating to last no, year. It didn't really evolve. Yeah, during the year at all. So um, this year, though, he's already scored over 100 points in the short program, which, which is, is that that's SFS incredible. Um, early, yes. And then uh, he's the thing with Dima is he's another one of those skaters where sometimes he, when he has a bad day, he has a really bad day. Yep. It's not just like he has a good day or a bad day. He has a really good day or a really bad day. day. Um, and for Dima, I, I I hope that he has another one of his good days for these competitions, but. Um, he's very 50-50. He's 50-50. Um, yeah. But we saw uh, the we saw the, through the programs. Yeah. And even though he has a bad day. Yeah. This season, I think his programs are pretty solid. They are pretty solid. Yeah. I, I'm really feeling his program, especially the short program this year. It's um, very good. So I'm really hoping this is like a comeback for Dima. Because here's the thing also with uh, the Russian men at the moment. We don't have Mikhail Kolyada. Because of uh, his uh, yes. his illness, so he's mm -hmm. out at least for the Grand Prix. I've I've seen conflicting reports. I've seen some people say he's taking the whole season up, and I've seen I've seen some people say it's just the Grand Prix series. Yeah. Uh, I did look up like the operation he's getting, uh, the surgery. It's um, it, he's supposed to heal within like six or seven weeks. Yeah. So I would assume that he could technically be back for Europeans, but if he doesn't compete at Russian Nationals, it's about whether or not they will allow him to compete yeah, at the Europeans. True. So maybe we won't see him at international competition this but year But then, at all. on the other hand, if they don't send Mikhail, then yeah. they have Dima and they have Alexander. Yeah. And they have a couple of, they also have, um, what's his name? Um, Lasukin, I forgot yeah, his Lasukin. first name. Yeah. Um, but they have a couple, but they don't, Mikhail Kolyada was really like their main star, yeah. so they're really looking for someone. And I, I thought Dima, like after the Olympics, I thought Dima was going to be like the, the rival to Mikhail Kolyada. And it just never really happened. And maybe this year I hope for him to set up, because we both have the same opinion here, that we're not, big, we're not a big fan of Alexander Samarin. No. Um, Sorry. Alexander. We don't really feel his skating and I don't think his technique is that good either. Um, you have a very uh, very good music choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. music choices are great. <laughs> um, music choices are great, but I'm not he a just fan. he um, he tends also to to take music with lyrics. Yes, and, and it's he, again he, yeah. he's not that good of a musical interpreter. So it's so the music takes the story and yeah. not him. Yeah. Um, so I'm really hoping for Dima to really like blossom Blue. this season. If he can blossom this season, yeah, that would be amazing. Because I think they have I think they have two spots. Spots of Worlds, I believe. That. Yeah, they have. They only have two. Yeah. So, um, I it's probably, hopefully, Dima and then whoever steps up at Russian Nationals yeah. is gonna take those spots. But I think they have three for Europeans because they did pretty well. So, um, it's probably gonna come down to who does well at Europeans. Yeah. Um. So I think that's the most important. Uh, we do have like some other names here who could possibly make like they could dark horse it if it. Yeah. <laughs> if if like, cause they're all these skaters like with the the men, it's always like. Anything could happen, right? Because no one is really that consistent. So uh, Michael Bershina, um, he really came through last season. Like every, he, he just like meddled at all his uh, Grand Grand Prix events, and then he, I think he was fourth or fifth at the uh, finals, at right? The finals, yeah. um, we also have Kasuki Tomono, who I personally have loved him since I think yeah Worlds 2018, yeah. Um, but he hasn't he hasn't really. It's not that his programs are bad. It's just that he tends to not land his jumps. Uh, that's so sad. <laughs> uh, really sad. That's just that's just how it is. Um, I'm waiting for him to to really be able to mix jumps and artistry, and then like it could really happen. Because here's the thing with the Japanese men, we're always seeing the struggle for third place with the Japanese men. We have Yuzo in first, we have Shoma in second, and then someone is taking that third place. Yeah. Um, personally, I'm rooting for Shun Sato. I've always been uh, rooting for Keiji Tanaka because I personally love him a lot. However, Shun Sato is really making a comeback this season. He really is. Um, but Kazuki Tomono is easily one who could also make, like, 
a splash and try yeah. to take that third spot. Um, because Japanese nationals also do that. They they tend to also factor nationals in very heavily. Yeah, true. Uh, but they also do look at the overall season. Yeah, the overall season. But I also think it's it's mostly for the first third spot. Yeah, because you see, no matter what she does, if she doesn't take the Grand Prix at all, yeah, or does and <laughs> never goes to European yeah, 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 for continents for for continents. Four continents. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, <laughs> he never goes to four continents. He would get the world spot yeah. anyway. He because he has the um, he has the credentials basically. Yeah. And the same with Shoma. Shoma could basically sit out the whole season. And they would still send him to worlds. Exactly. There's no doubt on who's the top two. But for the next for the next day, we need to see them compete against each other. They need to have as many outings yeah. as possible. And it makes kind of it, it kind of makes sense for them to, like. When you know that the, the third spot for Worlds is on the line, to put them all in the same competition yeah. at Nationals, it makes kind of sense to choose based on that because they know what's on the line, right? Yeah. Um, also, I, it's the same judges judging. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. Um, and Japanese, like, even though Nationals is a bit iffy with scoring, like, Japanese Nationals is not that, that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you compare, like, anything that compares to US Nationals is just like, yeah. okay, suddenly. Yeah. Even Russian Nationals. Um, but should we go to our predictions and our hopes and wants? So, oh. let's see here. Right, so, let's talk about what your dream podium would be. My, uh, <laughs> my dream podium <laughs> is a uh, Boyang for gold. Yes. And Jason for silver, mm -hmm. and Keegan for bronze. Yes. Um, <laughs> not that it's gonna happen, <laughs> but I want it to. Yeah, I would say once again, your podium is more realistic than what I want. <laughs> it's just, it's that just that's just a common thing. I feel like, um, yeah. So for mine, I again, I agree with you. I want Boyang to win, but also Boyang is my favorite skater we have here. Then I want Junwon in second place. <laughs> Well, Jonathan has to jump through a lot of hoops to go <laughs> to, to get second place. I love nice. him and I think he's great, but I think it's very unrealistic. And then I want Jason in third. Yes. Um, which I think is not entirely impossible. No. It's just that I, in my podium, I want him to beat Nathan. <laughs> and you also want him to beat Nathan, which is difficult. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah, but if we go to what we think will happen, we can obviously quickly agree that Nathan is going to win. Nathan's going to win. Um, I think if Nathan just go out on the ice, do one quad, and then skates off, they would let him win. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it feels like that's where we're going. But yeah. like, <clears throat> it's not that Nathan is undeserving of win. I don't think he's won... Okay, that's not true. I only think he's won one competition ever in his entire career where I really disagree with it, and that was Four Continents 2017. Um, but I think, because generally when he wins, he wins with a really, really big margin. And even if you take off the presentation points and the GOE, I generally think that he still deserved the win, but maybe not the score, right? Yeah, so... Um, but especially in this company we have here, he's far superior to anyone yeah. else when it comes to the quads. Maybe not too Boeing, um, but Boeing is much less consistent than Nathan is. It's true. So even if we factor in that Boeing and Nathan is probably on the same level, um, Boeing is more likely to make mistakes. So Yeah, he, also the, the difference in the presentation that yeah. they would get. Yeah, but even if, it, like, because I, I, I believe that if it was a fair competition, if it was a fair judging, Boeing will get a little bit more uh, presentation because yeah. he has better skating skills and he has better interpretation. Um, but even factoring that in, I still think there's a likelier chance of Nathan coming yeah. out as a winner because he doesn't pop jumps as often as Boeing and he doesn't fall as often as Boeing. And he also, it's very rare for him to under rotate. I've seen people say he under rotates, but that's not true. Nathan tends, like, really, Nathan is the kind of person when he under rotates, he falls. Yeah. Um, it's very, very rare that he stays on his feet for another rotation because his edge tends to catch the ice. Yeah. Um, second place and third place, we have the same people but flipped. So you have Boyang for like silver, right? I have Boyang for silver, yes. Yes. And then I have uh, Dimitri yeah. for, uh, for, for bronze. bronze. And I have it the other way. I, I think Dima for second and Boyang for third. And the more I say it, the less confident I am in that. <laughs> um, because the more I remember that Dima is just such a 50-50 skater. <laughs> Um, okay, so if Dima has his really good day, yeah. then I agree with you. Yeah. Then he would probably if, get the silver. Yeah. But if I was betting money on this, I would probably bet on your podium yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm not. And that is the catch here. I'm not betting money on this. Um, but no, I think it's very likely to see those three in the podium. Yeah. Um, I would be more likely to put Keegan up there if it wasn't for the strategy. Yeah, true. Um, and for Jason, again, it's his first outing. His um, first outing. I think we discussed this before that it's 
very likely that we are not putting Jason in contention here because it is his first competition, yeah. and he has said himself he's not a 100% yet. So yeah, um, and unfortunately, I, I also have the mini prediction that Junwon will get fourth. However, I am hoping in my heart that his bronze blessing from the previous Grand Prix <laughs> series carries over to this one, because I would love to that see was him again. so impressive, like yeah. bronze, 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 like triple bronze, triple bronze, three that third was... places in the Grand Prix series. That's three that out of three. <laughs> three out of three. That was yeah. um, that was re very impressive. It I was. was... He did so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so happy about it. Yeah, but I'm I'm but really hoping that the Jets the now second the half of the season. Oh, the second half. Of the, <laughs> the second oh, half. Um, so Junwan last season, yeah. his first half, yeah. the Grand Prix was yeah. amazing. Yeah, but it's I I completely but, I 100 blame the Korean nationals and their weird at as system to have like that many competitions leading up to it because a lot of like yeah. the bigger federations when they have nationals obviously they have regionals they have sections and all that. But the bigger names don't necessarily have to compete in those because if you have, I think uh, for a lot of the competitions, it's like if you place in a top three, you only have to compete in nationals. And if you have overlapping Grand Prix assignments, you don't yeah. have to compete either. And you kind of get a pass into the next stage of nationals or whatever. But Korean nationals is just weird. It's <laughs> like, uh, as far as I understand it, it's like you get, you go through like a couple of competitions and then the score you have from that competition carries over to the next one and then the the total of the scores from all the competitions is who determines the, the winner it's so weird it, the, the system is so it's weird so strange um and it it, it really seems to tire I, I her have, out <laughs> every time she talks about it i'm just like how do you say it works again? <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird it's just also it's just so different like yeah. why do it so different but also just it, it it's else. It tires out of skating because I don't think a lot of like if you're not a sports person, if you've never had to do competitive sports, I don't think a lot of people understand that when you get tired, it's not that it you get physically tired from competition. It's the mental fatigue yeah. of going through competition, competition after competition of competition, competition, like in such a short amount of time. Because um, physically, obviously, they can do it. They're all star athletes. They're world class figure right. skaters, but. It's the mental fatigue and it's it's really mental. Just, yeah, because I remember we used to have like October competition where every weekend we'd have a competition. Every every and weekend in October. By the third was... weekend, I I wouldn't even try to go for a personal best. I'd kind of just like skate through it and then hope next week I could do better. Yeah, because it's just like you can't do it. It's you too hard. Do. It's very hard. Because yeah. it's it really takes uh, a lot of like mental to do the best you can. Yeah, it does. And. When you do it in competition, it's so different from when you try to do it in practice. Yeah. Because, of course, competition. We you all competition uh, athletes. They uh, they practice yeah. what they have to do for the competition yeah. at practice. So as competition swimmers, we have sprints and yeah. we have uh, times where we were uh, trying to take the time and trying to be beat our personal best. Yeah. Uh, That's much easier to do in training. It I, is. Literally, listen, listen. Here's the thing. I had, um, I think it was 100 meters freestyle. Yeah. For a year, I kept going like five or second seconds under my PB, but I couldn't do it in competition. I kept going two seconds over. Yeah. And it was so frustrating. It, it's just, it, it's the, the amount of competition is really difficult. It's really, really difficult. The mental is just hard and it's the same people have been talking about when we get to like the Olympics and we have the team event and yeah. the individual event afterwards like it's the mental turnover it's so difficult especially for uh, the skaters who have the, the individual event just like a couple of days after yeah. it's so difficult I, I was really really impressed with a lot of pair skaters who had I think they had two days of rest or something yeah that between was the <laughs> team event and the that individual was crazy. It, it's just amazing and even like um, Sevchenko and Maso they the, the fact that they could break a world record despite the turnover, it was crazy. Um, but we're, we're talking about nothing now. <laughs> um, is there anything else we want to talk about before we end this? Was there anything else I want to talk about? I think... No, I got all my notes down. You got all your notes down. Yes, so... Yes. Um, yeah, it's closing in an hour now, so this is probably... <laughs> I have one more thing. Um, you don't know this either. I kept this as a surprise. Oh. So um, even though Yusu isn't in this competition, I wanted to get this um, thing out there before he competes. So I've been um, thinking lately, I want to cut my hair. But I like my long hair, so I was like, okay, I need some kind of sign to cut my hair. 
So here's what I ended up deciding. <laughs> what? Okay, good. She has had, I don't know, she have had short hair before. I, okay, I'm not gonna, so last time I cut my hair, when I, on my 16th birthday, I cut my hair, like, really, really, really short. Like, extremely like, short. Like, short. Boy short. Um, it's not gonna be that short. I, I'm thinking, like, like, this. So, around okay. my shoulder length. Um, because I, I have quite long hair now, and I like having hair that's long enough to, like, do something with. I'm going yeah. nowhere with this. Here's what I'm thinking. If Yusu wins all his competitions, and this has to include the Grand Prix Final and World Championships, which means he needs another four gold medals. So, Skate Canada, NHK Trophy, the Finals, and Worlds. He doesn't need to go to Nationals, but if he does, he has to win. He doesn't need to go to Four Cantons, but if he does, he has to win. That is, those are my conditions. So, another four medals, his Grand Prix assignments, Grand Prix Finals, Worlds, and any other competitions he decides to enter, he has to win. If he does so, I will cut my hair short on camera myself. And then I will <laughs> fix it afterwards because I style wigs, so yes. I, I can, I can, yeah. I can but that make is, it um, acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards, that is uh, my condition, and I will do it immediately <laughs> after Worlds should he win. Um, I'm scared. I don't personally think this will happen. <laughs> I think uh, his goal has been for the season to win the Grand Prix final. He said that last year, um, but he's still working on the fucking quad axle uh he landed the quad lutz in uh, fancy and ice in the summer and he's been talking quad flips um and as we all know the judges are way more behind him uh, behind nathan than they are in him so which is very sad it is it is um because i i do believe that if nathan and yusu skate clean obviously the win should go to yusu but i think the judges are more likely to go with nathan yeah. unfortunately However, it is still likely because he is Yuzuru Hanyu, so you don't know. So I'm taking this as a sign of the uni from the universe. If he wins everything, everything, including Worlds and Grand Prix Final, I will cut my hair on video. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> she doesn't know about this. I was like, I kept this from her to see, get her reaction on camera. <laughs> so yeah, she's dying a little bit now. I'm um, dying. Because I know how, mo how much she loves that she can put up her hair. I, I really love my long hair. Like, I always have, like, when I have long hair, I'm like, oh, I should cut it. But when I have short hair, I, I always miss my long hair. But I've been thinking about this for a year now. Okay. But because I've been so, like, I, I like doing the science from the universe kind of thing. Because then I don't feel so bad about it. Um, so I, I, that's what I've been thinking of okay. doing. So, yeah. yeah. If, the, if the universe want me, wants me to do it, I will do it. <laughs> So yeah, I wanted to say that with the first video um, doing, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is extra crazy yeah. because I've known her since we were six. Yeah, we, we've been friends <laughs> from a, for a, a long, long time. time. And I've only had short hair once. Yes. Um, I had twice, actually. Yeah, you, you're more off. Uh, I have I have hair. also very long hair. Yeah, we both have <laughs> quite can, long hair. You can um, see. Uh, but I just realized the both times that I cut my hair. Uh, where I thought about it for yeah. a year. It doesn't suit me And I, I cut it and I was like, but but yeah. I need to put it on. <laughs> yeah, she's very like, she yeah. likes her braids and I she like likes it. to style her hair way more than I do because I just tend to like put it up in a ponytail or whatever. Um, I have this perfect messy bun because right now it's not that curly because, <laughs> yeah. because I, I, I destroyed it's, it. <laughs> Yeah, she she had she had issues with her. Hair. I had issues. But yeah, she, uh, her hair is like perfect for like messy buns and braids and stuff. Like her yeah, hair just yes. kind of does what she wants to. But my hair doesn't. Uh, my hair is m way more unruly than yours is. Even though yours can look more. I am the only one who can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can. I, also, I can. I can braid your hair. Yeah. And it will allow me to braid it. But if you 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 do it, it'll, uh, it's it, not it, happening. I just my hair just doesn't work for me. But that's why. If the if the universe wants me to, I'm gonna. So cut Yuzu my hair. wins all the gold. All the gold medals. So it's another four, at minimum. But like he maybe he does nationals. It's been four years since last time. Maybe he will finally go to nationals. <laughs> if he goes to national, I'm sure he wins. I will. I, I will love it. That would be. I don't think that will ever happen. It will never happen. <laughs> but then she won't cut her hair. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's, that's that's my condition. So um, okay. We're closing. Come, we're gonna end this now. So you end can this. follow her on Instagram at yeah. Klaxki. I'm gonna put links in the description, and yeah. obviously you can follow me at Overlady96 and Twitter on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow my uh, figure skating Tumblr at Fan Spiral. 
I will link everything in the description below. Yeah. And until next week, where I'm gonna preview Skate Canada and talk about Skate America. Ma what did I just say? Preview Skate Canada and talk, talk about, about Skate, skate America. America. So yes. yeah, and I'll be alone probably for the next one because I won't be here anymore. So sad. <laughs> but I yeah. want you to stay. She she lives on the other side of the country, so that's why. Um, we have this fall holiday. And yes. She's been here. For I've been here for week. a week now. This is also why this is the only video I've been doing for a long time because yes. I've been here. Um, but yeah, sorry to take your <laughs> But yeah, that's it. So you can leave a like on this video if you like anything we had to say. Leave in the comments below what you thought of our discussion and what you think of the competition. What are your predictions for the competition? I said competition twice. And you can subscribe if you want to see more figure skating or reviews of One Piece, Book on a Hero, anything else that I do. I usually don't talk about figure skating, but I do occasionally. And until next time, bye! bye.